Hey there, I'm Rob with ebikes.org and behind me is the Lynx from Quiet Cat. Quiet Cat is known for their hunting, overlanding and off-roading e-bikes, but what the VPO system that Quiet Cat has allows you to do is ride in all the different class modes as well as unlimited, giving you ultimate versatility. Now we'll get into the nuts and bolts of this bike in just a moment, but I'll remind you to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, and check out ebikes.org for a ton of reviews just like this one on ebikes and ebike related products. Okay, with that business out of the way, let's dive into what makes this link such a fun e-bike to ride. You can tell just by looking at this bike that this uh, this Lynx was designed after a dirt bike or kind of a cafe racer moto cross style. Super cool. One thing you'll notice about this bike is that uh, online, it says it can fit riders from five foot to six five. I am six two, weigh about 200 pounds. Um, you can see here that I do fit on this and I, I can comfortably sit on it, but you notice that my knees are at like a 90 degree angle pretty much most of the time. And then when they're at the top of the swing of the, the crank here, my knees are pretty high, but it's still comfortable, can still fit really well. Uh, no problems there. It's just not a bike that puts you in a position for uh, super aggressive leg use, I would say. But the chances are, if you're buying this bike, you're not doing it for the fitness, you're doing it for the fun, so. We have a full suspension here with a 200 millimeter coilover spring in the back for the rear suspension. It also has a rebound adjuster knob here, so you turn it one way, you get a little bit more play. Turn it the other way, you get a stiffer ride. So that rear suspension is actually married with this front suspension, which offers 203 millimeters of travel. This is a KKE inverted front suspension. So you can adjust the, com the compression of the shock by turning it this way, which uh, allows a little bit more rebound. Or you, if you want a stiffer ride, you can adjust it all the way out and that, pr that pretty much locks it out. Okay, so you can see that as I lean on these handlebars, give it a good push and get some good rebound on it. I'm about 200 pounds and putting all my weight on it. It's got some good compression. I can turn it this way. You can see I kind of locked it up and I get a stiffer ride. So what powers the Lynx is a uh, thousand watt Bafang two gear hub motor in the back here. Now that's a lot of words put together. And what does that exactly mean? Well, with a lot of single speed e-bikes, you tend to over pedal the bike, meaning that your legs spin and you're not effectively moving the bike forward. Uh, with this two gear motor set up in the back, you can actually change gears and you feel a noticeable um, change in the gear ratio while you're pedaling. So right as you get to 15 miles an hour, your legs start to kind of overspin and then that gear changes and you're right back into uh, effectively pedaling the bike. So to turn the bike on, once we've inserted the battery and, and locked it in place, you can use the power button here, and when it turns on, it gives you a little vibration in the controller, letting you know that it's on. You can see this beautiful LED screen is visible during the day, and this gives us our miles per hour, our trip distance, um, our class mode that we are in. Um, we'll get to the VPO stuff in just a second, but that's what that is. And then we have, instead of uh, pedal assist levels like you would normally see on a lot of e-bikes, we have different power modes, ranging from eco, to trail, to boost, and boost being the most power that you can get, trail right in the middle, and then eco uh, on the lower end, more efficient side of things. Uh, there's also a walk assist mode that if you're down, you can hit it once and you get this little guy on a bike, and then you hold it down, and the bike will start to move forward on its own. So we'll take you through the VPO setup real quick and, and what that really means. So the VPO allows you to have uh, four different riding modes, class one, class two, or class three, as well as an unlimited mode, which allows you to have the full use of the throttle and go slightly over 28 miles per hour. The way that you can access that is by going over here to the controller, holding down the plus and minus button, and that will switch our center display here to say settings. And then we can go to our settings, find the mode option and change that from unlimited to say class two. In our case, we wanna go riding on the streets, make sure that we're legally able to. And then that's it, we're, we're ready to ride. Now we're in class two. And then when we get to uh, the trail that we wanna ride on, say it's on private land, we can switch it to unlimited and, and do 28 miles an hour with the use of our throttle. 
So you can see at the front here, we have a uh, moto styled headlight. Really cool, very bright. Lights up the trail in front of you really well. And you can see as I toggle the different headlight modes here, kind of like a high beam, low beam system. And then this mode actually will uh, light the ground up more in front of you. This one is more straight ahead. So that gives you the options right next to the controller on the, on the handlebars there. So the Lynx has 24 inch wheels, something a little different. You don't see 24 too often. And these are four inch wide tires. They're a good blend of urban riding and trail riding. The knobs are not too thick, not too knobby, but they do grip just right. Now the perk of riding on four inch wide tires is that you can ride them at slightly lower pressures, allowing you to get better grip in slippery situations. I will say that if you're riding on city streets or compact surfaces, if you're riding with low tire pressure, the tire has a tendency to bite into that surface and steer you where it wants to go. So I would say as you're riding on the pavement, ride it at higher tire pressure. And then when you're in sandy or snowy situations, you can lower that tire pressure a little bit and it acts like a snowshoe, distributing the weight across that surface rather than letting you sink down into it. So everything about the Lynx is just smooth lines, really cool, modern, aggressive looking, just so super cool. and. Adding on to that is the rack here on the back. This rack can hold up to 25 kilograms. And I think if you translate that to pounds, it's about a little over 50, 53, something like that. So it can hold quite a bit of weight. And Quiet Cat sells some pannier bags that hook onto the back here. They have mounting holes here that you can, uh, you can bolt baskets to or, or other accessories that they sell. Uh, you put your gun rack on here, you can put a maybe a fishing rod holder or just a basket to hold all your belongings. But either way, it has a little bit of more versatility, allows you to, to carry some cargo with you. Another cool feature of this bike is the Quiet Cat app. This app comes with anti-theft devices, allowing you to lock and unlock your bike. It also comes with GPS tracking allowing you to see where you left your bike. Maybe if you're on an adventure and you left your bike somewhere and you can't find it, you can use the GPS service to locate where your bike is. Quiet Cat claims that you will get 63 miles per charge out of this bike. I think maybe that's true if you're riding it in class one mode um, with eco mode on as well. So the most conservative riding mode that you can get. Um, this bike is, in my opinion, too fun for that, uh, riding it in boost in class two mode. For most of the day, I was able to get 25 miles out of it um, and used up three quarters of a battery. So that's how I'm gonna ride it, which means I'm gonna get far less than the claim 63 miles. But uh, if you're riding it around town though, I think 30 miles of range is perfectly fine. All right, folks, well, that does it for our review of the Lynx. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, we hope you found it informative. If you want the full details and write-up of this review, head over to ebikes.org. It's waiting for you there. As always, like, comment, and subscribe on the videos, and we'll see you on the next one.